Seven Secrets from Hindu Calendar Art by Devdutt Patnaik Chapter 3 Ardhanari's Secret God is stillness within Goddess is movement around Part 1 God in Hinduism can be Nirgun without form or Sagun with form Any representation of God with form is bound to be imperfect as no form is perfect if God is visualized as a plant, then it excludes animals and minerals. If God is visualized as human, it excludes plants and animals. If human, should it be a man, or a woman, or a combination of both? For Hindus, God is never limited to one form. The idea of God is expressed through plants, animals, minerals, humans, both male and female, and even forms that combine various beings. For most Hindus, God is best embodied in the form of three human couples. Brahma and Saraswati, Vishnu and Lakshmi, Shiva and Shakti. This image here visualizes the Hindu male trinity. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the sustainer, and Shiva is the destroyer. Brahma with four heads and a book looks like a priest. Vishnu with four arms holding a conch shell, disc, mace and lotus looks like a king. Shiva with his trident looks like a mendicant. This image here visualizes the Hindu female trinity. Lakshmi, Saraswati and Shakti embody wealth, knowledge and power. Lakshmi is dressed in red and holds a pot. Saraswati is dressed in white and holds a lute. Shakti holds weapons and rides a lion. If one observes these images carefully, the male trinity is associated with verbs. Creating, sustaining, destroying. The female trinity, on the other hand, is associated with nouns. Knowledge, wealth, power. The gods are doing. They can create, sustain or destroy. The goddesses are passive. Wealth, knowledge and power can be created, sustained or destroyed. One has to ask the question at this point. Is the gender of the image the signifier or the signified? Must we focus on the form of the symbol, the gender or the idea being symbolized through them? If we focus on the form and assume that the signifier, which is the form, and the signified, which is the idea, are the same, then it means that the image is a patriarchal one, telling us that men are active subjects, the ones who do things, while women are passive objects, the ones to whom things are done. But such interpretations satisfy only feminist, patriarchal and socialist ideology based on binaries like male-female, powerful-powerless, Victim, victimizer, master, servant. There is an alternate way of seeing these images to focus on the idea behind the form. When that is done, we realize then that the male triad signifies the individual, the observer, the one who acts, the one who senses, the one who responds, the spiritual reality that is within us. We create, sustain and destroy regardless of whether we are men or women. The female triad then signifies the observation which stimulates and provokes reaction and is a recipient of reaction. The world created by mind and matter, our world of thoughts, emotions and sensations. The gods are within all of us. The goddesses are around all of us. We can create, sustain or destroy wealth, knowledge and power. We can use, abuse or misuse wealth, knowledge and power. The next question is, why is the male form used for the spiritual subject while the female form is used for the material object? To understand this, we have to understand the difference between material reality and spiritual reality. Material reality is that which is contained within space and time. That which cannot be contained by space and time is spiritual reality. Material reality has form, 
Hence, it is measurable and is contained within a container. Spiritual reality is formless and immeasurable. Hence, it is not containable. The human male physiology, for example, creates life outside itself. On the other hand, life is created within the human female's body. Thus, the female form best represents the container, the source of all things material. The woman becomes the symbol of material reality, making man the symbol of spiritual reality. Unfortunately, society has corrupted the meaning, and representations have become reality. Rather than saying that women represent material reality and men represent spiritual reality, we say women are material reality and men are spiritual reality. This creates political and ideological conflicts. We need to be aware of the way we express these thoughts and realize the myth beyond the mythology. Our soul or consciousness can be creative, like Brahma, sustaining, like Vishnu, or destructive, like Shiva. Mind and matter can be intellectual, like Saraswati, economic, like Lakshmi, or emotional, like Shakti. Spiritual reality or God is best expressed through negation, neti neti, or not this, not that. Material reality or goddess is best expressed through affirmation, iti iti, this too, that too. Wealth, knowledge and power do not discriminate between the rich and the poor, the beautiful and the ugly, the upper classes and the lower classes. A bowl of rice will satisfy the hunger of a king as well as that of a beggar. He who seeks knowledge, whether a policeman or criminal, will gain knowledge. Power is available to the worthy. The goddess does not discriminate. She represents an absence of judgment. The capacity to judge is embodied in male forms. God creates, sustains and destroys society. He is the fountainhead of values, morality and ethics. The goddess can be measured, but the measurer and the measurement scale are created, sustained and destroyed by God. The Sanskrit word for measurement is Maya. That is why the goddess is called Mahamaya, the great one who can be measured and evaluated. She is matter, she is energy. Her various forms are created, sustained or destroyed by the one who observes her. When Narayan wakes up, the goddess is observed through the senses. She is classified using words, limited by thoughts and measured with scales. Suddenly she is evaluated and judged. These forms, names and evaluations enchant us, entrap us, delude us, stir our passions, make us happy and sad because they are never still. That is why this material world of changing forms is often referred to as Maya the embodiment of delusion. She is the world that we experience. As she keeps changing, we struggle to control her, hold her still and make her permanent. But we fail, for her essential nature is to transform. That we experience the Goddess makes us appreciate that which does not change, the still, the serene, the silent soul within us, God. That we experience the restlessness of Maya makes us realize there is Atma, the soul, watching the dance of the enchantress. That we experience nature, Prakriti, swallowing and spitting out life makes us seek Purusha, the silent witness to the games of life. The Upanishads, ancient Hindu scriptures dating to 500 BC, constantly refer to these two truths. A truth which changes, and a truth which does not change. The existence of one points to the existence of the other. In change, we seek permanence. In restlessness, we seek restfulness. In movement, we seek stillness. In sound, we seek silence. The idea of the two complementary truths reaches us all through history and geography. With a variety of plant, animal, mineral, geometrical and human symbols. All plants grow and change over time, but some more than others. 
At one extreme is the banyan tree. It has a long life and while it provides shade, it does not feed human beings. At the other extreme are grass and grain. They have very short lives and they provide no shade, but they provide food. The former represents the unchanging truth. It gives us spiritual shade when life becomes unbearable, but it is unable to create or sustain life. The latter represents the changing truth. It sustains the body, but it is unable to give a sense of permanence or stability. In Hindu rituals related to childbirth and marriage, one finds a lot of importance being given to grain and grass and to the banana tree. But there is no sign of the banyan tree or even a banyan leaf, which is restricted to respected ascetics outside the framework of the household. How could he keep another woman on his head when his wife sat on his lap? She wondered. To pacify Parvati, Shiva merged his body with hers. He became half a woman.